Hi everyone, I'm gonna talk about the wonderful instructor-led ISO training and a few words about my cashless experience in Singapore from February 17 to 21st in 2020. What I participated in was five days long ISO 27001 lead implementer training because this training is one of the mandatory PCI DSS assessor requirements since January 2019. ISO 27001 also known as ISMS is the most popular IT security framework in the world, starting from small organization to the large ones. This course is not a training for the third-party prospective auditors, but for ISMS project leaders who are seeking their organization's conformity to ISMS certified by the third-party accreditation bodies. This course is not getting in detail about tech things in Annex A normative, but focusing on information security management system requirements include PDCA, SOA, risk assessment, policy documentation, and process design. The things the instructor told us really opened my eyes. We had a lot of group discussions, presentations, analyzation question and answer sessions among an instructor and seven classmates. I'm so glad to learn PCI DSS conformity for bank card with credit card number is legal obligation in Singapore. I also learned Singapore specific IT security topics such as PDPA, the Personal Data Protection Act 2012. I definitely recommend the Japanese people to take a face-to-face -face classroom session in English in foreign countries to learn different legal constraints and the business culture if your situation allows. I'll explain this course exam. The 20% is from training performance from day 1 to day 4. And the 80% is from the pen paper exam which is held on day 5 with 4 sections consisting of 10 multiple choice questions, 4 short essays, and 3 long essays, and 2 more long essays. Each section has the minimum score required to pass. The exam is 2 hours long plus some more for non-English speakers. The score and the pass-fail result was your unique certification number for the exam came to us by email nearly one month from the day five of the training. The second part of this video is for my cashless experience as we work in Singapore after the classroom training. I feel like Singapore Central is much more advanced compared to Central Tokyo. Many shops in Tokyo still don't accept contactless Visa PayWave credit card yet, but everywhere in Singapore. Surprisingly, Singapore also has Kotsuke payment card, so-called EasyLink, which can be used at convenience stores as well as any kind of public transportation which is just like Suica and Pasmo in Japan. The tech-heavy National University of Singapore campus was almost fully cashless. The campus has a convenience store that deploys radio frequency identifier tag machines, and all I needed to do was registering my palm fingerprint and my credit card information for the first visit. Then I can open the automatic door by scanning my palm, then check out the products by typing the last four digits of my phone number. This kind of multi-factor authentication which requires something which I have and something which I know. I was so disappointed that I couldn't buy Tasty Bubble Tea because I didn't own the most popular Singaporean debit card Nespay, which associated with either DBS, UOB, or OCBC bank account. Japanese payment brand JCB is widely accepted in East Asian countries here Singapore as well. But less usable compared to Visa PayWave because Visa has APAC headquarters office in Singapore. The keywords for the fee work this time were cashless, contactless, plasticless, receiptless, pin codeless, signatureless, cashierless, security guardless for shopping. Especially contactless with stranger as shopping is real sanitization solutions for virus infection. And that kind of physical distance related business including Apple Card and POS devices will be growing rapidly and globally in 2020.